In order to calculate the beta for General Motors, the first thing we want to do is download closing prices for General Motors, and we want to download closing prices or closing values for the S&P 500, both from finance.yahoo.com. Note that if you pull the adjusted close values, then those already take into account any stock splits and stock dividends, so all we have to do is calculate returns. We don't need to worry ourselves with dividends at all. In order to calculate returns, the easiest way to do it is to take the price on 219 2008 divided by the previous day's price and subtract one from it, and we have a rate of return of negative 7.8% for uh, 219, and then we can do the same thing for the S&P 500 just by calculating it over. And so we'll call these return GM and return uh, S&P. All right, now the next thing to do is calculate those returns all the way down, and so I'm going to go ahead and copy that uh, all the way down to the end of the data. Now, as I'm doing that, note that I've pulled weekly data. Uh, weekly data is actually one of the best uh, intervals to use for calculating a beta. Daily data can be used. You can use monthly data, but of course, if you use monthly data, you've got to go back an awful lot of years in order to have very many observations. Daily data is okay, except it turns out that uh, daily data is a good deal noisier than weekly data, and so it's actually better to use weekly data, and I find that three years worth of weekly data is about the optimal level of, uh, optimal number of observations to use for calculating a beta. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to calculate beta, one of them using the regression tool and one of them just using the slope tool. The first one I'm going to do is the slope tool. Uh, basically what we want to know is what is the relationship between the S&P 500 return and General Motors return. And the easiest way to do that is with this slope function, equal slope. And notice the dialog box here says that it has known y's and known x's. Uh, what that means is we have y is a function of x's, y is the dependent variable, or another way of saying it, it's the one that gets changed, and that would be the return on General Motors. So we want to look at General Motors y values, those will be the y values, uh, and we want to use the returns there. And I'm going to highlight all the way down to the bottom of the data. And then enter a comma. And then go back up to the top and we'll do the return for S&P 500. And close it off with the right parentheses. And notice that gives us a beta of 1.791463. All right, there's the beta for S&P 500. And we'll just go ahead and label it. Now let's go ahead and do this using the regression tool as well. The regression tool is going to do exactly the same thing. It's just going to give us a good deal more data about the relationship between General Motors and the S&P 500. In order to use this regression tool, I'm going to click on Data. And then over here, Data Analysis. And I'm going to scroll down to Regression Tool and click on OK. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did with the slope function, but I'm going to enter it into the input boxes. So the Y range is going to be General Motors return. So it's important that you get this straight. The Y range is the stock's return. The X range is the index return. So Y range is, S &P 5, uh, is the General Motors return. And the X range is going to be the S&P 500 index return. And now there are a couple of other items that go on this regression, uh, this regression input box. We can put some labels. We can uh, check whether or not we want to set the constant to be zero. Typically, you don't want to do that. Uh, we can decide whether we want to output this data, and it's going to be a variety of, there's going to be some information that comes out with this, and do we want to put this in a certain place by clicking on this radio button, or alternately, do we want a new worksheet ply? And that's what I'm going to do, is to, is to have a new worksheet, pl uh, worksheet ply. And so let's go ahead and click on OK. 
And let's see what the data looks like. Remember we had a 1.79 beta for General Motors. If we look at this output, we have a variety of things. You have uh, an R squared, which measures how good the fit is, which is an R squared of 0.23 is not too bad for returns data. It's a reasonably good fit. We have 155 observations. That's 155 weekly returns, so it's about three years worth of data. And what we have here is the intercept, which measures uh, the constant that goes along with the equation. And then for x variable 1, we only have one variable we have a regression coefficient of 1.79, which is the same thing as the beta that we had before. Now, just to illustrate, we'd also like to look at the relationship between General Motors and the S&P 500 graphically, so I'm going to go ahead and plot a graph for it as well. To graph the data, let's click on Insert, Charts, and do a scatter chart. And in order to do the scatter chart, we're going to have to select the data. So select some data. We're going to add a series. Let's call it GM. And we want to pick the X values first. And just like before, the X values are the S&P 500 values. So notice I use the shift and the end and the down button to go to the bottom of the data series. And now let's go ahead and click on the series Y values. And those we want those to be the, the General Motors data, data. Click on OK. And what you'll see here that um, it changed the type of chart we had, which I don't really understand why I did that. But if we just right click on the chart, and change chart type from right now it's this kind of chart we want to change it back to a scatter chart without any lines and notice we've got some data here we've got a scatter plot of General Motors where General Motors is on the um, the y-axis and the S&P 500 is on the x-axis and let's go ahead and just for fun add a trend line to this if you uh, right click and click on uh, add a trend line then we can choose linear, polynomial, polynomial, or a moving average. Let's go ahead and make it a linear one. And let's go ahead and display the equation on the, you can't see that. Let's click on display the equation on the chart. And sure enough, we've got an equation and it shows that slope that we said was the beta 1.7915. And this is the y-intercept of point negative point oh 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 one now notice just if you know anything about algebra this doesn't look like a slope of 1.79 it looks like a slope that's a whole lot less and that's because this chart has automatic uh, axes for the ranges and the S&P 500 range is only from say 0 over here to 0 .6, 0 0.06 so 6% the GM range is from 0 to 25 percent. If we wanted them to have similar ranges, what we can do is we can uh, right click over here on, let's see if I can find it, right click on the format axis, on the, on the horizontal axis, and then click on, let's see if you can see the, you can't see the drop down box. It says format axis down at the bottom. And uh, let's go ahead and make it, let it go from negative 25 percent, negative 0.25, up to positive 0.25. And now notice this equation does look like, this, this graph here does look like it has a slope of about 0 0.7, 0 1.79. Now one thing that you might notice about these charts is it's sometimes inconvenient to have them sitting there in the middle of your data. And so let's go ahead and, and move the chart somewhere else. Let's move it to a new sheet. Uh, we'll call it chart one. And now we have the data over here under chart one. We can edit it just the way we did before. We've got our data over here on sheet one and we also have our regression results over there on sheet four. So we've got a variety of different sheets with a variety of different bits of ways of representing the data.